Good morning, Dr. Charles. It's Kaiser Anai, and today I will be presenting the multi-carrier modulations. So let's dive to our table of contents. We will start with a small introduction about the MCN, then we're going to talk about the basics and the development of the multi-carrier modulations. Then we're going to see uh, three special techniques about the MCM, which are the orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, or FDM, the generalized frequency division multiplexing, and the filter bank multi-carrier. Then we will finish with a small conclusion. So what's MCM? Multi-carrier modulation is a technique for transmitting data by sending the data over multiple carriers, which are normally closed-spaced. Multi-carrier modulation has several advantages including resilience to interference, resilience to narrow band fading, and multipath effects. As a result, multi-carrier modulation techniques are widely used for data transmission as it's able to provide an effective signal waveform which is separately efficient and resilient to the real-world environment. So let's see now the basics of the multi-carrier modulation. Multi-carrier modulation operates by dividing the data stream to be transmitted into a number of lower data rates. Each of the lower data rate streams is then used to modulate an individual carrier. When the overall transmission is received, the receiver has to then reassemble the overall data stream from those received on the individual carriers. It's possible to use a variety of different techniques for multi-carrier transmissions. Each from MCM has its own advantages and can be used in different applications. Let's see now the development of the multi-carrier modulation. The idea of MCM started in the late 50s and the early 60s by military users with the radio links. Originally, the concept of MCM required the use of several channels that were separated from each other by the use of steep-sided filters, or they were closed-spaced. In this way, interference from the different channels could be eliminated. However, multi-carrier modulation systems first became widely used with the introduction of broadcasting systems such as DAB, Digital Radio Broadcasting, and DVB, Digital Video Broadcasting, which used OFDM, the Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing, which are going to talk about it in the next, in the next slides. OFDM used processing power within the receiver and the orthogonality between the carriers to ensure the interference was present. Also, other cellular systems have used multi-carrier techniques to achieve high data rates by using two or more carriers from a standard cellular system. With new networking and cellular system on the horizon, other multi-carrier techniques have been investigated and their use seems like in the near future. There are many forms of multi-carrier modulation techniques that are in use of being investigated for the near future use. And we're going to talk about the orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, the generalized frequency division multiplexing, and the filter bank multi-carrier. So let's start with the orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. OFDM is possibly the most widely used from the multi-carrier modulation. It uses multiple closely spaced carriers and as the result of their orthogonality, mutual interference between them is avoided. So the next slide, we're going to see the difference between the OFDM and the FDM to see it more clearly. So FDM is a multiplexing method used to divide a channel into many non-overlapping subchannels. FDM allows multiple users to share one single link. Today, we're going to talk about the OFDM, a variation of FDM. OFDM is a very popular and most used multiplexing method used for the latest wireless and, te and telecommunication standards, such as Wi-Fi 802.11ac, 4G and 5G cellular techniques, satellites, and many others. So let's see the comparison between the FDM and the OFDM. FDM allows multiple users to share one link by dividing available bandwidth into different non-overlapping subchannels. A guard band is inserted between adjacent subchannels so that different signals travel separately without interfering with each other. 
Though RDM, on the other hand, these subchannels are closely spaced. Not only there's no guard band between them, but actually there are overlapped. We can see that with the same available bandwidth, OFDM would allow more data transmission than FDM. But how does RDM present interference while multiple subchannels overlap each other? So after combining these three signals, we can see that when the signal reaches the peak, the two neighbors are at the zero point or null. The same for the two others. For example, let's take the blue signal. We can see that the blue signal is at its maximum when the pink signal and the yellow signal are equal to zero. Also, let's take the yellow one. We can see that the yellow is at its maximum when the blue one and the pink one are null. Therefore, orthogonal means signals are multiplexed in a way that the peak of one signal occurs at null of the other signals. And now, let's talk about the generalized frequency division multiplexing. The generalized frequency division multiplexing is a multi-carrier modulation scheme that uses closed spaced non-orthogonal carriers and provides flexible pulse shaping. It's therefore attractive for various applications, such as machine-to-machine -machine communications. GFDM is a signal transmission technology in which multiple signals can simultaneously transmit over the same channel. FDM can be used in both wired and wireless networking for transmitting a large amounts of data at high speed. GFDM is the simplest and oldest form of multiplexing in wireless networking technology. FDM involves simultaneously transmitting multiple signals on different frequencies. These different frequencies share non-overlapping portions of the total frequencies band being used. Signals from different data sources are fed into a multiplexer that modulate each signal and transmit them at different frequencies. These signals are then transmitted over the wire or through wireless communication and are separated at the destination using a demultiplexer. And now finally, we're going to talk about the filter bank multi-carrier. The filter bank multi-carrier aims to overcome some of the shortcomings that were introduced with OFDM the orthogonal frequency divisional multiplexing. One of the main shortcomings arises from the fact that OFDM requires the use of what termed a cyclic prefix. The cyclic prefix is essentially a copy part of a transmitted symbol in OFDM that is appended at the beginning of the next. This redundancy reduces the throughput of transmission and also wastes power. A further disadvantage of OFDM is that the spectral localization of the subcarriers is weak, and this results in spectral leakage and interference issues with unsynchronized signals. Filter bank multi-carrier is, is a development of OFDM using banks of filters that are implemented, typically using digital signals processing techniques (FBMC). When carriers were modulated in OFDM system, side lobes spread out either side. With a filter bank system, the filters used to remove these and therefore a much clearer carrier's result. Finally, as a conclusion, we can say that the future wireless systems will be characterized by a large range of possible uses cases. This requires a flexible allocation of the available time frequency resources, which is difficult in conventional orthogonal frequency division multiplexing or FDM. Thus, Modifications of OFDM, such as wind drawing or filtering, became necessary. Thank you for your attention.